Good morning. So the bell ringer is if you put a set of tires on your vehicle that is not the same size as the tires your car came with, how are the car's odometer and speedometer readings affected? Okay, so let's think about that. I'm going to put larger tires on a vehicle that's odometer and speedometer calibrated to the factory manufactured suggested tires. So uh, what gets bigger? Everything, right? The diameter, the circumference, everything gets increased. Or if you put a smaller one, it gets reduced, right? So if that's the case, what happens to the speedometer and the odometer? How are they affected? Okay. Um, good things. Tennis match today. Keep your uh, fellow students on the tennis team uh, lifted up so they can do well. All right. You've just purchased a new vehicle equipped with factory installed 245 70 16 tires, and you think they're too small. So you replace them with 285 70 16 tires. How does this change the accuracy of the speedometer and odometer readings? So we're going to answer these questions. Odometer reads 20,000, how far have you actually traveled? Speedometer reads 60, how fast are you actually going? So let's look. On a tire with the size P24570R16, that's these numbers right here. They're not the same. I'm just showing you. That's how they would read on the tire. You see the cursor right there? P stands for passenger, okay? 245 specifies the tire's width in millimeters. That's this part right here. The number after the slash is the tire's aspect ratio. In this case, it's 70. That is the ratio of the tire's height to its width reported as a percent. So height over width is 70 in percent. And the number after the R, which stands for radial, by the way, that simply means that it's got steel wires running through the tire, um, is 16 is the diameter of the tire's rim in inches. Notice the difference in the unit of measure here. Width is in millimeters, rim is in inches. Might have to do a conversion, huh? So for a tire such as a car or truck, the aspect ratio is height to width or height over width. So the AR equals H over W. Aspect ratio is the height over the width. So if the tire size is 245, 70, 16, what is the circumference? Notice in this schematic, it shows you what it means by tire height. It's the height of this sidewall, the distance from the rim to the tire tread. Notice it's on the bottom too. And then you have the rim diameter or the rim height and then the tire width. All right, tire size 245, 70, 16. What's the circumference in inches? First thing we do, give what we're given. Width is 245 millimeters. That's given in the 245 right here. Um, the height is calculated from the equation AR equals H over W. Um, we can multiply W to both sides. And we get H, which is we're trying to find out, that isolates that height, equals a width times the aspect ratio in decimal equivalence of percentage. So if it's 70%, we multiply our number by 0.7. So 245 millimeters times 0.7 is 171.5 millimeters, which is our height. Um, convert to inches. Notice we have to convert it to inches. Fortunately, we know that 25.4 millimeters equals one inch. So we just divide that, that, that uh, measurement, 171.55, by the conversion factor, 25.4, and we get the height of the sidewall in inches, which is 6.75 inches. Now, two times that sidewall height, notice that we talked about that earlier. Here, there are two rim or sidewall heights. You see it? We have to multiply that times two to help us find the diameter. Because all we have to do now is add that two times 6.75 to the 16, which is given for the rim height or the rim diameter, and it gives us a 29.5. Now let's look at the other tire, the one we're changing it to. Notice we get the circumference also. Multiply that 29.5 diameter times pi gives us 92.69. All right. The tire size 285, 75, 16. What is the circumference in inches? 
Follow the same process. Width is in millimeters, and it's given. Multiply that by the aspect ratio. In this case, it's 75%. So we multiply 285 times 0.75. We get a much larger sidewall height, don't we? 213.75 millimeters divided by that conversion factor gives us 8.42 inches. That's two full inches larger than the other tire in diameter, or in, I'm sorry, in sidewall height. So diameter times is two times the sidewall height plus the rim height, or 32.84 inches. Now, if you look at the conversion, that's 103.17 inches here in uh, circumference. So we've got larger width. We've got a bigger aspect ratio, which means the tire height is much larger. It's almost two inches larger. The diameter is over three inches. Uh, there's three inches more in diameter and over 10 inches in circumference in the difference. So what is the, uh, how many times further? We have gone 10.49 inches further every rotation. So 100 rotations may not seem like much in one rotation, but in 100 rotations, that's 10 times 100. That's 1,000 inches. Divide that by 12, that's, that's a lot of feet. Wouldn't take long to gain a couple miles. Now the conversion factor, or the K factor, is where we're going to take the circumference of the larger tire, the circumference of the different tire, over the circumference of the factory installed tire. And that gives us the change in a decimal form that we can multiply our odometer or our speedometer and even our factory, uh, uh, factory given miles per gallon to determine what effect it has on it. Now, if the tire's bigger than the factory installed tire, that K factor is going to be greater than one. If it's greater than one, then we know the speedometer is actually reading more, or we're actually going faster than the speedometer reads. And we're actually going further than the odometer reads. Let's look at it from this perspective. 20,000 miles times that K factor, we've actually gone 22,264. That's 2,264 miles more than the odometer reads. Look at this. We're going 60 miles an hour. We're actually going 66.8 miles per hour. And in the miles per gallon, if miles is in the numerator, we can actually see that that has a positive effect to the miles per gallon. So if we have 18 miles per gallon, we multiply that 1.11, we get 20 miles per gallon. But I want you to consider this. Due to the increased friction from the added surface area of the tire on the ground, you got a bigger footprint, bigger tire, it's wider. You're going to have a lot more tread on the ground. That's going to cause a lot more friction. And the increased weight of the four bigger tires, the tires are going to hold more air, and air under pressure weighs a lot. So the engine would actually lose miles per gallon because of the added gas needed to provide more energy to move the heavier vehicle. So if you're driving a truck with large tires and speedometer showed a speed of 65, could you be ticketed for exceeding the 65 mile an hour speed limit by more than five miles per hour? How about by more than 10 miles per hour? Let's see. Speed is the reported speed times K. 65 times 1.11 is 72.15 miles per hour. If the speed limit was 65, you could get ticketed for exceeding by five miles per hour because you're going 70 is five miles an hour over 65, and we're going 72. So, yeah, but we would not get ticketed for going over that speed limit by 10. All right, I'm going to launch you with this. Gentlemen, ladies, you want to install those big Mickey Thompson 44s on your truck, lift it up, make it look really cool, check your speedometer, go slower than usual, because your speedometer is not going to be as accurate as you might think. So go into the Google Classroom, got to – Google assignment, an assignment to do in there. Please get that done as soon as possible. In the meantime, be blessed and be a blessing.